Welcome back, friends. Before we dive into our discussion today, I have a thought. Perhaps over time, we might call this content something like the coffee shop analysis or the coffee shop grid, because the intention here is to keep things relaxed, yet still meaningful. People often forget the power of words, never underestimate the spoken or written word. More often than not, they can trigger social change, even change the world. Do you remember the Arab Spring that initially erupted in Tunisia and Egypt on the 18th of December 2010? That movement was sparked by social media platforms like Facebook, Twitter and YouTube. It was here that words spread, awakening and inciting the Arab world towards the change they envisioned. This highlights the immense power of words. With words, you can make friends and enemies in an instant. Imagine walking into a market and hurling insults at a vendor there. You would have an enemy in a heartbeat and it could even escalate to physical violence or worse. On the flip side, with words, you can also win people over and make many friends. The more friends you have, the greater your fortune will be. That's why, to me, words are not merely a collection of letters. They are a weapon. Yes, words are a weapon. I want to share with you three simple, yet often overlooked, powerful words. Please, sorry, and thank you. These may seem trivial, but they can change your life if applied in the right context and at the right time. If you ask someone for help, don't forget to say please. After they've helped you, say thank you. And importantly, whether you've made a mistake or not, there's no harm in saying sorry. By practicing these small habits, you greatly increase your chances of being liked by many people, or at least not making more enemies. Furthermore, if you can discern when to speak and when to stay silent, that's even better. Talking too much is not good, and being too quiet is also not ideal. Strive for a balance. Some people may not appreciate it if you talk too much, but being too quiet isn't good either, right? Oh yes, don't forget to smile appropriately. After all, it's said that a smile is a form of charity. It's uncomfortable talking to someone with a sour face. It's simply boring. This, to me, is the politics of life that parents often fail to teach their children. The three words we mentioned earlier also relate to the importance of eloquence in speech. But remember, being eloquent is not the same as being talkative. If you're too talkative, you might be referred to as a chatterbox. You should know when to speak seriously or just make small talk, depending on the situation. Since we live in Indonesia, let's take the example of Bung Karno or Suikarno, the proclaimer of the Republic of Indonesia. He was eloquent in his speeches, his rhetoric and thoughts were sharply expressed, capable of moving and inspiring the Indonesian people to fight for their independence. Imagine if... In the midst of a revolution engulfing three quarters of the world, the West has been at peace. Both great blocs, in fact, have successfully practiced coexistence for all those years, thus contradicting those thus contradicting those who deny the possibility of coexistence. We of Asia, I repeat, we of Asia, we have not known peace. After peace came to Europe, we endured atomic bombs. We endured our own national revolution in Indonesia. We endured the torment of Vietnam. We suffered the torture, the torture of Korea. We still suffer the agony of Algeria. Is it now to be the turn of our African brothers? Are they to be tortured while our wounds are still unhealed? And yet, the West is still at peace. Do you wonder that we now demand, yes, demand? Uncarno had been timid or quiet. We might not have achieved our independence. This is just a small example from me to make it easier for you to digest. Perhaps eloquence in speech or the way one expresses words significantly influences a person's success. This is just a preliminary assumption.